All right, this is one that ties back into the password hashes we talked about, pbkdf2. This is password-based key derivation function, and it is very popular. So let's, uh, here's how it works. It does, it takes um, a password and then a salt, which are characters it adds to the password, and then it, um, performs many rounds of hashing on there. Sees the number of rounds required. This is how long the key you want is. Here's the derived key. And here's the pseudo random function, which is the hash function. That's the general parameters here. So it's the same way you hash passwords to store them in a password table like the SAM database on Windows or the, uh, not password, but shadow file on modern versions of Linux. So let's uh, give it a try. And again, easy enough to do in Python. So Python three, make clear this old stuff and Python three. Okay, so you import hash live, which we've used before. And then you can use the help of hash live to see how it works. And if you go down here, you'll see the various functions available, MD5, SHA1, SHA2, and so on. And I uh, wonder how I get page down on this machine. Not that. Oh, that's it. Okay. There's Blake2 and SHA3 and so on. I get to the end. All right. And uh, in the function section, you'll see this one, pbkdf2 hmac. All right, so here's the description of it. Uh, the same, it does the same thing as this generic function we just talked about. So we're gonna make a 16 byte key, the kind you might need for AES from the password apple. So quit to get out of that. And that will do it. This will take Apple, which has to be a byte stream. So you start with B and then no salt, one round of MD5. So there it is, zero AA. Now you got a challenger two. Now the key and the salt are bytes. And uh, we talked about that before. So now you've got a uh, challenge, a three digit number, and here's the hash value. So, uh, you got to calculate them all, make a for loop and find it out of those thousand. And then we can use PBK, DF2 and AES together. This is the most common way you do it. So let's just do this here. All right, so I import the hash library. I get AES, which we've used before. Now I have clear text, which has a, a passphrase, which is a whole long sentence here. Or uh, that's not, that's just the data we're going to encrypt. And I made it with some spaces so it'll be integral multiples of 16, because I'm using electronic codebook mode just for simplicity. And then we calculate the key using one round of MD5 and then pass it to Apple. That gives us a key. And now you encrypt it. You encrypt the clear text and then print it out. But the ciphertext is, of course, no longer printable. It's random hexadecimal, so you can use hex to print it out. So this is the encrypted text with the key derived from the word Apple of that plain text. And to decrypt it, you just do this, very much what we've done before. The only thing new is the way we got the key. Again, you see it turns back into the plain text, although it's a byte stream. And uh, now you can use a password instead. So that's the fun scene. So there's some challenges here. And then this is this all started because I have a student who raises a lot of interesting questions. And he said, um, what kind of encryption is used to encrypt virtual machines? In VMware, you can choose to encrypt the hard drive, but how does that work? And I went and looked at it and here's how it works. VMware uses SHA-1 with 1000 iterations and a 256 bit key size which is 16 bytes, that's what we've been using, and AES ECB, electronic code book, which is interesting and possibly a weakness. That's what they use. So 
If you encrypt a VMX file, like the virtual machine, like the Debian machine you're probably running, you'll find uh, it has a field here that shows you the data that's in the metadata, in the VMX file, which is the metadata for a virtual machine. It has the algorithm, the cipher, the number of rounds, the salt, and so on. So you can recover the password from this. Uh, that's how you decrypt the data of the drive. Anyway, then you can try, this is a key safe. And uh, that's how the VMware works. I think it uses all that to encrypt the key that's used for the drive. So that's why, by the way, ECB is not a bad thing here because you're only encrypting a key, a short thing. But this is how the key safe is stored. So there's two rounds of encryption. You encrypt the hard drive of the key, and then you encrypt the key and stick it in this text file in this format. So here's a harder safe, and that's it. You might check it out. And that's uh, the use of this in practice. I always kind of wondered that. How come real encryption, people use um, passwords instead of those, where are those 16-byte random keys? This is what you do. You turn those passwords into keys.